Hello and welcome to another episode of Not Your Average Farm Shop, brought to you by the Farm Stratford. Today I am joined by Darren Putt, who is the founder of Motus Training, which is a holistic lifestyle training brand based in Stratford upon Avon. So thank you for joining us, Darren. I've also got Charlie, who is the director and founder of the farm here, to join in the conversation. So thank you for coming on again, Charlie. Um, So today we're going to be talking all about personal responsibility. And I think especially around this time of year, it can feel quite difficult to know where that balance lies in the approach to Christmas and continuing to take responsibility for our health. So we're going to be delving into that a little bit today. But to start off, Darren, could you just tell us a little bit about you, about Motors Training and how that all came about? Sure. Well, thank you for having me, both of you, first of all. So how Motors came about, I will do my best to give you the abbreviated version. Um, Essentially, I did sports science at university many, many years ago now. Uh, And then when I came out, I started working in the health and fitness industry and was pretty disappointed by what I found. Um, I felt the health and fitness industry wasn't really serving people. Uh, It wasn't set up to help people succeed. It was founded on failure. And so I decided I need to do do my own thing and do something about it. Um, And that's essentially what we've done. It's been about setting up a win-win situation for, for us and for our clients. Okay. And in your experience, in your work, what would you define personal responsibility as? Personal responsibility to me when it comes to health and I guess to to life as a whole is embracing the idea that we've got choice and that we've got control uh, and that we can make things better uh, or we can make things worse. And I guess by doing nothing, choosing to do nothing, that that's a choice and that's a decision in itself. Taking health as the obvious example, if we work to improve our health, it makes everything that we do better. We perform better in every area. We're nicer people to be around. And generally, things go well for us. Uh, If we don't, then the opposite happens. What about you, Charlie? What would you describe personal responsibility as? I mean, exactly what you said there, Darren, for sure. I'm kind of thinking of when you feel at your worst and I'm going to say a hangover here I know that's really awful to use as an example however there's this knock-on effect that then you start to put yourself in this kind of like hole and self-abuse and it's just not the ideal situation however if you put yourself first you, you eat healthy you have all the vitamins and minerals that you need and get that rest you really do feel your best and positive actions then happen with that so yeah I can relate to that for sure. I definitely agree that on paper it all sounds really great but for a lot of people it takes a lot more to actually take ownership for their health so with you Darren what have you found among your clients and also for you personally to be the biggest barrier to taking that step to you know really being responsible for your well-being. Yeah, you're quite right, Lily. It's not necessarily easy, but then most things that are worthwhile aren't, aren't easy and require some hard work. Um, I guess the first thing I would say is that you know, at Motus and myself, we try very hard not to not to come across as preachy or, or judgmental in any way, um, because I've I've been there myself with you know, my own struggles with health in the past. Uh, physical and stuff you can't see as well. So I like to think I'm coming from a bit of a place of, of understanding. Um, I, I think in terms of the barriers, the one that comes up first and foremost, and particularly at the moment, I don't know what's going on at the moment, is time. Is time. What do you think, Charlie? Definitely. Ta- there's this weird negative negativeness. What's, what's Negativity. Negativity. <laughs> of time and running out of time and not having enough time in your life when if you plan correctly and 
just prioritize things. There, there is enough time, but there's such a panic around time. And it, oh, yeah. Thinking about it now. Yeah, it, it's funny. Just at, at the moment, we were talking last week amongst the team that more than pretty much any time I can remember, people seem to feel overwhelmed at the moment and like everything's a bit chaotic and things are piling up and sneaking up on them. So I, I understand the feeling for sure. And I think we all, we all get it from time to time. But I think what you said just there, Charlie, is absolutely right. It's not really time because we all have the same time. And we're all, when push comes to shove, pretty good at making things happen when we need to. So it's about priorities. I think that as well, because I think sometimes if you have that structure for a little while in your life and then you go back to, I, I was talking to you before about going away and I did sort of yoga twice a day and before that I was doing nowhere near it. But since I've been back, I've been making a real effort to try and bookend my days like with that. Although, you know, it's kind of slipping away, but I find that there is a renewed motivation that like if you can get into it for a little while but it's almost just keeping that a consistent habit, um, which we'll come on to a little bit later. Um, but you mentioned there that obviously professionally with the clients that you've seen, that has come up again and again, the thing with time. But for you personally, would you say that is the same? Um, we joke a little bit that I've kind of turned into one of our clients over the years in the you know, now I'm a little bit older than I used to be. I've got two young children. I'm running a business. So, yeah, I'm juggling lots of things. So it has definitely become more of a challenge. And, excuse me, <clears throat> on my good days, then I kind of take up that challenge and I see it as even more of a priority because actually I need to set an example to my children. I need to set an example to my clients. But yeah, then on a, a not so good day, it, it's easy to see how, how it can be overwhelming. Um, how do you balance the running a business health thing, Charlie? Um, in all honesty, not that well. I'm still learning. Um, I think the best thing for me, and we, Lily and I have spoken about this before, is booking my yoga training, which then helped really have that work-life balance in place um, and dedicate time to doing something outside of the farm. But I, I think I've stopped beating myself up about having that work-life balance so strict and regimented where I'm quite lucky that the farm is not, cor it's not as like corporate. We're not this strict hierarchy of people. We're a big team, we're a big family. So I think... I'm not as worse off as I maybe think that, or my mind thinks that I am, because I do have a good work-life balance, really. I see my parents regularly, my sister teaches here, I get to see her, Max gets to enjoy here, my best friend works with me, my best friend's mum is here, I have friends here. So I think I brought life to work, so I've actually kind of moved it, which... I don't, that's probably, I don't know if that's good or bad, that's for some people that might be bad, however for me it, it is actually working, I'm able to bring my dog here, which is very lucky, so yeah, I think I'm looking at work-life balance slightly differently than what I did two years ago, and it's not as painful or as like split as it was, it's merging together and I'm quite liking that at the moment. Bringing life to work. Yeah, the that. ultimate integration, yeah. isn't it? That? I didn't know if that was a good or bad thing then, but bringing how I brought my life to work, it's benefited me. I've seen the positives in it. However, I could see how some people could potentially bring their life to work and it could also be detrimental. So I could see both sides. I guess it just demonstrates that it's so part of you and it's quite an amazing position to feel that you love it so much that you want to bring your life to work and it's yeah. not you don't want to have a massive clear-cut barrier yeah but is there any time that you feel you do just need to get completely away definitely. from everything definitely however I feel like I have to like 
flee the country to do that. So, <laughs> which probably contradicts of what I've just spoken about, but um, yeah, it's ongoing. Yeah, all about balance. It's all about balance. Yeah. yeah. Well, we talk to businesses all the time about the idea of work-life balance, and we've pretty much come to the conclusion that it's a load of rubbish. So I'm wondering whether I can steal your little strap line about Please bringing li- bringing life to yeah. work. I might have to trademark that. <laughs> <one>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excuse me. I, th- I think you should. And um, one of the difficulties, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm frogging my throat. <laughs> uh, with the idea of work-life balance, is the idea that they're separate. Because to me, like life is the big thing, and work is a part of life, and a really important part of life. And especially if it's something that you're really passionate about and it aligns with your, I guess, with your mission or with your personal ethos, then, of course, it has to be integrated with everything else that you do. Yeah. And yet every now and then, and again, I'll testify to this, and it can get to be a lot. Um, but most of the time, it's got to work to your benefit because everything benefits the other. Yeah. I mean... I'll flip it round to you. Do you feel like you've got work-life balance as such, even though we just said <clears> it's kind of rubbish, but you've got two kids in the mix. I don't have children yeah. yet, so... Do you want to borrow them? <laughs> <laughs> a little test drive. A little test drive. We always want volunteers here. <clears throat> yeah, so well, great. send them down. <laughs> um, I have had an interesting situation, I guess, in that where I spend most of my time at work in our studio... I live literally next door. And we've been doing that now for about 10 years. And when we first decided to do that, people thought we were crazy. They're like, oh, you want to live right next door to where you work? What what are you doing? Way before working from home became like the thing. And I thought, well, let's give give it a try and and see what happens. Because of the the type of work I do, I quite often work strange hours, like early in the morning, late at night. So... That gives me the chance to see my daughters during the day. It also gives me access to healthy food, which I can prepare at home, all of which then helps me be better at, at work. So, yeah, we completely integrate everything. Wow. You've mentioned a couple of times your daughters, and then also there's your clients as well. But what is it within you, do you think, that inspires you to help others like your children and the clients that come to you or that you seek out? That's a big question. <laughs> uh, a couple of things. Firstly, as, as I mentioned, uh, I guess contrary to popular opinion of what a health professional should be like, is I, I've had some pretty big struggles with my own health. So if I can help people not do that, <laughs> um, then that makes me very happy. Uh, but then also if I can help them move away from that, that situation as well, then that's, that's massively motivating. The, how, the, the kids thing is a huge motivator for me. Uh, if I'm ever struggling to make decisions that are aligned with health and our ethos, then I think, what would I like my kids to see me doing? And setting an example for them is definitely it's a huge motivator. In, in terms of in terms of clients, then what gives me the most satisfaction is seeing them make huge changes to their lifestyle. You know, literally to the point where it's become a turning point in their life, and how that goes to impact everything else they do. And if they then start uh, using those those same uh, methods or having that that same lifestyle with their children, and so it's impacting their whole family, that feels like I've done something to make the world better, I suppose. Is there one really rewarding moment that stands out amongst all of that, where you've seen like someone's progression and it's just felt really unbelievable? It's really difficult to pick out one, uh, because I think... I. One of, our, um, one of our values at Motors is about everybody being an individual. And so you know, when you think about fitness, I guess, you know, for some people, climbing Everest you know, might be the achievement. And of course, it's a massive thing. 
but for other people it'd be something that is seemingly really you know, small in comparison. It might be having the confidence to speak in front of a, an audience because they feel confident about the way they look. Uh, it might be that they've improved their health to such a degree that their body becomes free from disease. So I, I, I don't think I can pick out one thing. There's just so many, so many. Wow, I mean, it all sounds rewarding. Yeah, if I was to ask you a similar question, that kind of in the sense of health or, I know maybe there's somebody that comes into the farm a lot that you've seen kind of transform from being here. I don't know if it applies in quite the same way because it's not a service dedicated to, you know, improving people's health on a like one-on-one basis. But is there anything that you've seen like that that's just felt as if you're making a real positive difference? I think I would, I would mainly say I've seen that through Flourish. So having Flourish on site with um, the alternate kind of children's learning is the most rewarding thing really is that the children have a safe place to learn um, they have one one-to-ones um, lots of outdoor learning and it's just it's just a safe haven for them and watching the children grow and learn and learn about the animals and the market garden is incredible to see um, and I also remember a really a moment during lockdown which actually brought me to tears but I think it was just highly emotional um, time wasn't it locked down was um, when we had one of our customers who was going through chemo and she refused to go kind of anywhere else because she just said that she felt so safe at the farm and having those conversations and personal conversations with the team and just building that community um, was really quite a rewarding thing um, and also she came in when she told us that she got the all clear and she managed to ring the bell, which was like, oh, God. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was definitely amazing. And also the team and how they've developed over the years. And I'd say, I'll, I'll just say like Alice. So Alice in the cafe, she came to me when she was 17. She'd never had a job before. Um, she started out quite shy and she wouldn't mind me saying that. Um, just kind of clearing. And now... She's turning 21 next week. She's been with me since the day we started. She can run the floor and run the cafe pretty much on her own, covering breaks. And she's just absolutely smashing it. And that, again, is just come through learning and, yeah, being at the farm, which is quite, quite a nice feeling. No, that is amazing. Um, going back a little bit to what we were saying at the start of the recording, um, we said how the festive period can be quite a difficult time for people when it comes to juggling, you know, fitness, nutrition, everything like that. Um, and on the 16th of November, little plug, Darren is going to be running a workshop here, which is looking at that, how to stay on track with your health in the run up to Christmas. So to give us a little flavour of what that will involve, Darren, is there anything that you can say on that? Hmm. Without giving too much away. Yeah, without um, any... A sneak peek. Yeah, a sneak peek. <laughs> no spoilers. Okay, what I will say is that uh, the seeming contradiction that you can't look after your health, be healthy and have fun, if I answer that really directly and honestly, I think it's a complete fallacy uh, that you can't be healthy and enjoy yourself. I think it's an easy excuse for people. And I actually think the opposite is true. And hopefully that's what we're going to show people in this workshop. Uh, we're going to show them some practical steps that they can, they can take to make that the case. Uh, I guess by way of an example, you know, how many people do you know who are genuinely, genuinely happy who aren't in a good place with their health or working towards it. Yeah, it's thought-provoking. Yeah, I feel like everybody, everyone I know is on, always on that journey. They, they don't ever want to make themselves feel worse. They're always on that journey to better themselves or do something like a workshop to, yeah, yeah. 
like you said earlier as well, I think that health looks different to everyone. So, you know, everybody might be on a different journey, but what we eat, you know, the way we exercise can vary like vastly between people. And I think that's fine. It's just people finding the niche that suits them. And then that's their version of health that they can work towards and keep building on. Um, But I think one thing in particular is there's quite an important distinction to be made between discipline and motivation. So I think a lot of people perhaps fall into the trap of thinking they need to be motivated to, I don't know, smash out a workout or eat really well. But how much do you agree with that or think that it's about discipline and just kind of making, like implementing those changes into your life and then following through with them, but also keeping room for the fun and, you know, if you want to go off the health rails once in a while, then that's off completely... The health yeah. Rails. Wow. That's awesome. yeah. Um, I think motivation is overrated. Uh, the reality is that motivation comes and goes. It won't, won't be there each and every day for anything, whether it's exercise or, or nutrition or whatever. Uh, I think discipline is underrated. But the great thing is, is that discipline or consistency is perhaps a more appealing word to some people. A lot of people recoil when you say the word discipline. It sounds military in some way, doesn't it? Um, So maybe consistency is a better word. And almost everything with health, business, with everything, I believe can be achieved through consistency. And consistency can be learnt and can be trained. Um, I get back to the, the idea of going off the, <laughs> the health rails. Um, again, I think that's a, it's a bit of a myth that it means that you can't ever make different choices. Um, however, and this might be a bit contentious, but we'll say it anyway. I think a lot of people enter into improving their health thinking it means, right, I must never again do X, Y, Z. I can't go out, I can't drink, I can't eat certain types of food. Um, One of the rules that we have is that you can eat or drink or do whatever you want, whenever you want, because we're all adults, right? But it's about making choices that the majority of the time are aligned with what your goals are and what your vision is for your your health and and for your life. Uh, However, what I would say is that If we think that fun is limited to times when you consume alcohol or have chocolate, sadly that speaks to a a deeper problem. And that's probably something that... That's so true. That's so true. Honestly, what you just said there, I'm like, wow. Yeah, you made me think about so many different things in my head there about consistency, discipline, but what my version of fun is, what my version... Redefining fun. I don't know when it starts, I think it starts on TV and quite early. We associate fun with generally alcohol. Yeah. And I'm not sure that's yeah. how I want my children well, to grow up. Sometimes when I think of actually what I really enjoy and what I find fun is going on, and this might sound dramatic here, like going on a 30 mile walk. I actually enjoy that. Yeah. And that that is that's also healthy for me. However, if I don't do that, oh, I'm so I'm curious with myself. I haven't done it. I then eat badly because I'm in a bad mood, and then I get into this vicious circle. Whereas I am going to take what you've said on board. And did you say thirty mile walk? Yeah, I actually find that fun. Do you know you like bikes and cars? <laughs> How far could you way. get? 30 miles from so here? Banbury to Oxford. It's Banbury to Oxford. I and did it. Do you remember how you've wow. done it? How yeah. long did it take? Um, it took about nine and a half hours. However, Max had it in his um, like system as three and a half hours. And I was thinking, I know you're an ex-marine, but nobody yeah. can do that. It's dark. <laughs> You'd be squinting. <laughs> no way. What um, would you say are some of your alternative sources of fun? Or not even alternative, just your idea of fun, Darren? Fun. It's usually about the people that you're with. It's usually something outside, and it is usually some type of physical activity. We were talking just before we started the podcast about surfing. Yes. And I was saying, for example, how to me that's one of the ultimate 
activities because you know you're, you're working in when it goes well, which is now often, uh, you have to work in harmony with nature and kind of harnessing that is something very very special. Uh, and so for me, something like that, I feel, I feel the same about skiing. I feel the same about mountain biking. Uh, and again, those activities that we can do as a family now, I'd say they're where I feel my happiest. But I don't know if happy is the same as fun. I think it's, for me anyway, it just it's those moments where your whole body just sort of lights up and you're beaming and just having mm-hmm. such a good time. And you just, yeah, you can't really put it into words. It's just yeah. a feeling yeah. where almost unlocking that childlike enjoyment of things I think that's what yeah. fun is to and me it's a cliche but yeah, it's, in, it's being in the moment isn't it and being, yeah. and being present so actually for me this is like therapy I, I've realised actually that so one of my goals is to live my life in a, a way so that my health allows me to have more of those experiences absolutely I think we could all learn something from that yeah. um, I thought of a question earlier actually where does the name Motus come from? Because when we were talking about motivation, I was like, oh, Motus, motivation. Has that got anything to do with it? Not exactly, but you're, you're pretty close. Uh, so when uh, when we were founding the business, we thought, right, every fitness business is like called Darren's personal training or, or something like that, and that's a bit naff. So I thought, no, let's make it something that sounds really professional. Lots of businesses that look and sound really professional have Latin names. So I literally got a Latin dictionary <laughs> and looked through it and found something that struck me that had a link with health. Uh, and motus actually means movement or motion. Oh. And so I think there's a very clear link with health there. But I think there's also, a, uh, if you want to get fancy about it, there's a good kind of metaphor for life and a journey, that type of thing. Moving forward. Yeah, I like that story. That's good. Um, just as we're coming towards the end of today's episode, I've got a few quick fire questions for you. Pressure. So this one's a bit of a self-indulgent one, really. But what is your favourite thing about the farm? My favourite thing about the farm? Um, I think it is the idea that a business is so tied up in its wording is very well in its ethos like it's about living a lifestyle and helping other people to do the same and I guess that appeals because it's similar to our, our business in, in that way I haven't worded that very well have I? no the values yeah. align yeah. they align I like that yeah I think yeah. so yeah, you can, and you can feel that when you walk into the farm I didn't get you to say this either by the way yeah, it's like, like a, no payment a, involved. No, no, not at all. No, oh, but you, but you, you. No, but you, you can feel that, and that's that's a pretty special thing. And I hope that people feel that when they walk into our business as well. Yeah, no, it's nice to be able to join up with businesses like yourself, like with the workshops and things like that, to be able to bring people together, like with like-minded people that feel a similar sort of way. Um, Another quick fire question. I don't know how quick fire they are, really. Um, but what would be one thing that you'd say you do every day to live well? Just some ritual, perhaps, that you carve out into your day or something like that that is important for you, for your health, maybe for checking in with yourself, staying responsible, perhaps. Okay, so this sounds like a proper health and fitness person's cliche again this year I've really got back into my meditation and it's taken me years and years and years to to be consistent with meditation but I've been doing it consistently now this year I really feel like, I'm, like the benefits compound have compounded now and it's now become so important in how it sets me up to to be how I want to be through the day, to be that's the right mix of energised but yet calm and focused. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's one thing that I, I, I missed a day the other day. I was so disappointed. Um, I'd done every day for I can't 
250 days. Oh, wow. And then I missed a day. And then only realised when I went to do it the next day. And I was like, oh, my God. No, did you feel a difference from that one day that you didn't? Well, there's an interesting story there because previously I would have beaten myself up about this. For I'd probably still be doing it now, like, like a week later. But I was like, do you know what? I've done 250 days it's really not going to make any difference. Yeah, it's an achievement in itself, like, that you've done that time. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, and I think it's that compounding, and that works with all sorts of habits, you know, with health in, in particular, that it doesn't have to be every single day, but there must be, like, a critical threshold that means you've got that protection in, in, that, you, that you carry with everything you do. I heard quite a good phrase for it I think on another podcast somewhere which said daily ish for habits like that and I think I really like that because a lot of the time you think oh if I don't do yeah yoga or meditation or whatever it is every single day then you know you sort of lost it but yeah there's there's a big thing that you you have to do something every day or as soon as you slip from the plan that all is lost yeah and that's actually one day isn't it like I I I felt like that, and I would say, actually, similar to you, this, I like to do 12,000 steps a day. That's just, I'm like, right, it makes me feel like I've achieved something, but also been moving, I've taken the dog out, just not sat at a desk and done, like, the nine-to-five. And on Saturday, I was in London doing my yoga training, and I think I did about 4,000 steps, and that was, like, the commute. However... I'd had a seven hour lecture on the ethos of yoga and my brain, I had learned so much and absorbed so much and concentrated that I was thinking, you might not have physically done 12,000 steps, but your mind has done so much and you've been so active for the time that you've been learning. Don't think that that's like you've fallen off the bandwagon because you've not done that for one day. It's, you've still been active, but just in a different way. And then on Sunday, I just like, I walked. So it wasn't that I've like not been consistent. It's just that, like you said, it's just daily-ish day, like mm. your targets. And I love the way you phrased that as well, like the idea that your mind's done the steps even yeah. if your body hasn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I completely. And I, and I think it's, it's about perspective. And this is something, again, that we work on a lot with our clients that in terms of setting goals or expectations on a one day just doesn't matter because stuff happens life happens what happens and what determines your results and the changes that you see is what happens over a month and three months and six months and a year so if you measured your steps over a year you would probably still have averaged your your 12,000 a day yeah it's true Stop looking at it daily and look at it as... Completely. And people do that yeah. daily and then they do that, well, by Tuesday they've eaten a bit of chocolate. Oh my God, that's the end of it. And then start again the next Monday. Just start again in each moment. Yeah, I think there's definitely a message to be taken from that, that it doesn't have to be done perfectly. And for someone who's maybe struggling to know where to get started with, you know, being a little bit more conscious of their health, it's just knowing that they can do it in steps and it doesn't have to be everything. All at once. Yeah, I think um, it's noticing as well. Um, and it, you know, to take it a, a simple example of something like that. So if people do a habit for a few days and then don't do it, sometimes people won't notice for another two or three weeks. But if you notice the following day and then go again, imagine the difference that makes if yeah. you stack that up over time. So if you can shorten the gaps where you're, <laughs> you're not noticing, i.e. increase your awareness of your, of your health, then everything will get better. Lovely. Just got a couple more questions. There's one that I try to ask to every guest that I have on, and that's just a song, a feel-good song, that you would add to our wellness playlist. I'm collecting these from everyone that I've spoken to. Um, so if there's just anything that you know puts a smile on your face. I realise it is quite an on-the-spot question because there are many millions of songs in existence. It is. Okay, I've got two. Um, and they're not so much for me personally as the kind of family things, actually. So one is Go Your Own Way, which I think is the Eagles. Is it it's Eagles? Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Right. Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like 
the idea of that, about forging your own path and, and going your own way. And then the second one is giant. Rag and Bone. Oh, Rag and Bone, yeah. With, is it with Dermot Kennedy? Dermot Kennedy, yeah. Or is that a different one? No, there's two. Is there? two there's two songs called Giant. I know the one you mean, though, I think. Yeah. I think, we yeah. We can be giant. No. Wait, oh. that, that's the Dermot Kennedy no. one. <laughs> the other one. <laughs> Wait, how does it go? How's it going? It's got, is it a trumpet or trombone here where it goes... Oh, <laughs> like, we are, yeah, yeah, I can think of it, I can hear it in my head, but I'm not going to try and do it. No, but, so that's, yeah. that's become like a bit of a, an anthem in our family, including the actions. I love so. that, I love that. <laughs> Striving, you know, getting everyone to try and reach for the top. Yeah, the Charlie, giant. Songs? Oh, have you done this already? I've done this already, however, at the moment, mine would be um, Higher and Higher, which Lynn knows this, because at my sister's wedding a few weeks ago, um, there was, in the kind of service, it said him, and it was Higher and Higher, and we all had tambourines, and it was just the most magical moment, and everybody was so happy, and there was so much love, and my face literally hurt from smiling so much. But it was just one of those songs that now I hear it and I just think, oh, I love it. <laughs> it's such beautiful memories. What's yeah. Really? What's oh my goodness. Um, I think one song that I really like at the moment is called Free Yourself by Jessie Ware. And it's just really feel good. Great song. Love it. Just have a little dance to that song. Um, and yeah, just free She's yourself. From when she is. She's great. Um, so if that's what I'd go with. One final question. I realise these quick fire ones have lasted forever. <laughs> um, slow fire. Yeah, slow fire. If we could rephrase it as that. Um, but on the Motus website, you have some quite fun get to know sections for all of your different coaches. I had a little look. <laughs> and um, I noticed that a quote that you live by that really intrigued me is that everything popular is wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? How, again, really not quick, but, <laughs> um, but how you built that into Motus and what you do, and just to kind of leave us with a final message from you. Everything popular is wrong. Okay, uh, that was Oscar Wilde, I believe. Yeah, I'd, I'd forgotten about that one, but I do, I do love it. Uh, I think it's not so much that necessarily everything popular is wrong. But again, with a lot of things, if you find yourself on the side of the majority, you've got you've mistimed it. Uh, you can think of that in business terms. Um, but it's more about not is it wrong, but questioning and questioning assumptions. There are so many assumptions made in all walks of life, in particular with health. And I just think it's really important to take a step back and be open-minded and question and say, is that really true? Uh, is it true for me? And experiment, I guess. There are so, many, so many things that, without getting political, uh, people like to be binary. One is black, it's white, but really so many things are great. And with health, I think part of the fun and part of the, the journey is about finding what works for you. And that often is not work, not what works for the, the person who's next to you. I couldn't agree more with that. Thank you so much, Darren, for coming on and speaking to the, both of us today. I've really enjoyed the conversation and to Charlie for making a second appearance on the podcast. Um, so, yeah, we'll be back with another episode coming very soon. Thank you. Thank you. If you'd like to keep up to date with everything going on at the farm, you can give us a follow on Instagram at the farm Stratford. If you'd like to send us a voice note, you can do so by emailing hello at the farm Not Your Average Farm Shop is brought to you by the farm Stratford.